Welcome. My name is Molly Hall, and I am the Gallery Director at Meredith College. Thank you for zooming into our virtual gallery talk, which coincides with our current exhibition, Together We Are Having a Good Day. We are not in the actual exhibition space, but instead we're in a studio in Gaddy Hamlet Center in campus. The slideshow that will be presented over Zoom includes works of art featured in the actual exhibition, as well as videos that display the techniques of both artists. I have the pleasure of introducing, as well as working with two very talented artists, Yuko Taylor and Kim Godwin. Yuko is a Japanese American Nahanga and oil painter who has exhibited her works globally and draws inspiration from modern Western art and Japanese historical imagery. Yuko's son, King, is a painter with autism. King transfers what he feels and what is true to him onto canvas and other three-dimensional objects using a combination of bright colors, animals, and numbers. This mother and son duo exhibit their works side by side and together we are having a good day, which is open to the public in the Johnson Hall Rotunda until November 11th. Now I will give the Zoom microphone, symbolically, to Yuko. Thank you all for coming to our exhibition at the Meredith College Art Department. My name is Yuko Nogami, and I am accompanied with my son, King Nobuyoshi Garwin who is adult with autism. The title for the exhibition is again, Together We Are Having a Good Day. I would like to thank you all for attending today. This exhibition is made possible with Associate Professor of Art, Ms. Lisa Pierce, and the moderator is the gallery director, Ms. Mary Hall. I would like to recognize her very much for guiding us patiently regardless of our challenges. Thank you all, and it's Dean. Uh, this image that you're looking uh, is you going king at our studio at work. We help each other with the artist experience. We teach each other how to be better artists every day. I wonder if you can see each other's work, how we influence each other or our fundamental ideologies of creating works. Now take a look at King's work. Um, this title is The Cow is Having a Good Day because it's with the moon, acrylic on canvas wrapped with strips. Um, this one is a large painting. This painting is an early era of his. I had him mindlessly painting on a large canvas to have him learn to express freely. I think it was about seven years ago. At that time, I suggested that he should put his feelings in a painting if he wants to be a real artist. And all of a sudden, he started writing a lot of numbers in his paintings. I was stunned. We had a great time creating together from then on. The, this next um, painting title, The Sheep is Having a Good Day because it is snowing, acrylic on canvas wrapped with strips. Um, at that time, I had him try out different art materials to get his expression to take shape. It seems to be a challenge to paint good numbers with the brush for him. Before he used the pen for this painting, King used acrylic paint in a bottle with a small pointy nozzle to write the numbers. He had a hard time using this tool. Still, the appearance of the repeating snow circles and numbers was so visually moving that it was as if we could see his unstoppable emotions intersect. It was during this time that I realized that he was a true artist I was determined not to let it die out. 
So this is a recent painting. The bird is having a good day because it is with pretty leaves, acrylic on canvas. The bird is um, smiley and it is a very happy painting. Um, please experience the world of kings here. Your eyes will discover so many things in this painting. So I would like to show you a little video here of the process how he made this painting. King uh, sketches the image on the canvas and carefully fill in section with colors. And he uses short strokes to fill in different hue of blues. This technique makes this uh, result of painting very moving. This is just amazing uh, how it works out. And next video. He applied his numbers very, very carefully as if the, each number is so precious to him. And this is just amazing <laughs> to me. As a mom, I'm very proud. Oops. So next uh, slide, this is also a video. Particular numbers are drawn over and over repeatedly on his paintings. Those are making the painting colors and numbers to dance with an optical illusion. To some people, it looks like the surface of a weaved textile. I think he finds this kind of phenomenon soothing. Does he see this beautiful as we do or does he find it comforting? I wonder if there is some hidden visual world in his mind we cannot see. So let's go to the sculpture story. The ice cream is having a good day because it's with the banana. It's wood uh, on, uh, on wood acrylic paint. I once spoke to Jeffrey about King's feeling overlap and intersected with this interdimensional world in my poor English. Jeffrey is a creative designer he interested in King's painting and is wonderful collector. He took me to his studio one day and presented me with these sculptures that he had curved in 3D. King was amazed. His eye got used to it. He specified a color for me. I helped as I was told by King and painted the background color. And King's magical number were applied on after another. This was a collaboration we made together. Okay, next slide. The goat is having a good day because it's with golden leaves, acrylic on canvas. This is a painting with some of King's most recent representations. This type of artwork created from his sketches on the other hand, the line drawing kind of artwork is painted without a sketch. Nowadays, King has developed his own various techniques, such as changing the pen thickness and the size and spacing of the numbers. All of the techniques also reflect his feelings and changes, changes the final result. However, his subject matter which underlines the painting was not changed since the first painting and remains consistent. It is a fact that all of his art expresses his feelings in a straightforward manner. Now let's hear King's greetings and a statement. Okay, King, do you think you can read this for me? Yeah, mm -hmm. is it okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right. Hello everyone, I'm King from your King Islands. 
Thank you all for coming to our art exhibition today. Mm. My life got better after I got a job um, in artist in I am autistic. I am a great artist because I work hard. I work hard with my mom together, putting a lot of number are hard, but it feels good. I like being an artist because I get to make people happy by selling my art and eat some things connect me with others that is like the great Anastasia's car. It makes the squeak sound in. It is so much fun. I think Stacy graduated from Canada College. That is a golden color in Number is 78. Sometimes I feel hard about the art show. Sometimes I feel hard about the coronavirus. It is very scary and that is zero. Then I do my number and I feel better. I don't feel awkward anymore. I play many songs at the same time. I play music with my iPad, iPhone, iPad, radio, TV, and computer. That feels very good. And that is like the golden stuff. That is purple and number is 71. When I paint, I like to do it so good. I like to take time and I make sure I did everything right at the timing with my music because it feels it makes me feel good. All of my paintings are great. I put numbers in my feelings because they are like trees. The birds are standing on the tree. Sometimes other animals are there and I feel them too. My favorite things are all in the number in my paintings. I can see them because I'm the artist. All of my paintings have colors. All of the colors have feelings. I know about this very well. Thank all of you for the love. That is a good thing of things. Thank you for listening, King's speech. So um, now you can see this is my artwork here in the slide. Uh, move on to mine. The circle. Uh, the original Nihonga traditional Japanese style with mineral and organic paints. I'm just actually embarrassed to be next to a real artist still. I cannot quit after coming so far, so I'm going to introduce you to some of my paintings. Um, I painted this picture when I came to think about the source of human life amid all kinds of disturbing world situations this year. I thought that when everything goes round and round, 
when we let the laws of the earth take over, we can experience peace and tranquility. And that is what I wanted to paint. The motif of the mountains and the flowing water describes in our paintings. I hope that makes this everybody happy. So um, this video that I'm going to show here, uh, this is showing the method of melting the Nikawa glue. I explain what is Nika Nihonga in my term. There was a time when the Nihonga Japanese painting was separated from the Western painting just because they are painted by the Japanese with the concept of Western art. Strictly speaking, I am referring to my painting as the Nihonga because it used Nikawa collaging as the binding material. Nikawa is the glue and it is a gelatin substance made, made from deer and rabbit bone marrow. The Nihonga process of using this binding to mix the powder or sand pigments that becomes the color is tedious, but the best part is that it produces fascinating effect on the paint surface. I use a hot water to melt sticks or granular glue and adjust it to suitable strength. Then I add the pigments to it, melt it carefully in a small dish, knead it, and apply it to the picture with a brush. I say apply because it is a little different from painting. Okay, and then, oops. So this is the time-lapse video of pigment painting. I use the colored grains in a glass tube. Uh, those are Iwa Enogu pigments. Some of the grains are called rock paints and are made of crushed natural minerals and they are expensive. So I put the name of each one of them and use them with care. Each pigment size numbered from one through 13 and the larger the number, the finer it is crushed and the cloudier it colors becomes. On the contrary, as for the smaller the number, the pigment size is more extensive. I need to melt the Nikawa thicker to adhere to those on the surface securely. If I, uh, I, I'm going to, to show it again. Uh, if a sparkly pigment is used, the appearance effect can be significant. Although this is a digression, I also use paint called Suihi paint which color made a base with white calcium carbonate powder made from ground dried oyster shells. It is inexpensive, but the color effect is magnificent like no other. It is available in solid form on the cracked blocks. So I grind up, uh, dissolve it to Nikawa. It has a superb matte texture. When you look at the actual painting, you may distinguish between Iwa Enogu and Suihi paint. Oops. So it is an, another example for the uh, applying a paint here. Uh, it is not showing here, but I would like to mention about the chop. I finished my painting with the chop at the end this is a common practice in Oriental painting. My chop are in both hiragana and kanji characters on my name. I stamp with red ink and then cover with a red pigment to hold them down. Okay, so enough about my material. Let's, oops, let's move to a different slide here. Okay. Um, this is my triptych large painting. It's called Pearl Mountain for Tamako, Nihonga painting. Um, in Japan, the word mountain often refers to Mount Fuji. However, I feel that my mountain represents the foundation of humanity. This painting was inspired by artist Tamako Kataoka she painted many pictures of Mount Fuji. 
I thought her image of a red Mount Fuji is magnificent. When I reflected on why her Mount Fuji was red, I thought I could sense that the mountain was alive. So here is a small piece, uh, mostly painted in Suihi Enogu. Himalayan night, uh, original Nihonga traditional painting. Mm, the mountain of Himalaya seems to float in the sky even in the daytime when viewed from Darjeeling. It's uh, uh, northeast India. As I step out onto the frozen terrace before sunrise, I wait for the sun to rise. The distance mountain begin to grow with a peachy hue as they emerge from the sky. I was so tired from the journey and incredibly excited that the sky appeared to shimmer and I felt like I was floating. This is how I would describe the view from the middle of the flower of Bougainvillea field mountains far away. And Van Gogh starry night had the sky also bustling too. And this painting is a larger one. Um, the title is Your Life. This is first time I tried to express the mountain as if it is a human life. It was a challenge for me in terms of, of materials and the new environment to paint. Come to think of it, it is often said that there are many peaks and valleys in life. My gift to you is your life, gorgeous and powerful and full of unforgettable uniqueness. Such a beauty, beautiful yet delicate life that is impervious, impervious to outside noise and it could be a call in rhythm with the, mount, with the moon. I thought of meditation to center you and be aware of yourself as a beautiful mountain. So this one is the last slide of my works. The title is COVID-19, I Can't Live Without You. When we think about the horrible virus, we are taught a deadly problem with this virus. It is the fact that this virus cannot live and grow on its own. Its parasitic attitude resembled that of a beautiful jealous lover. I wanted to paint a picture of beautiful desperate woman or a person with the coronavirus that doesn't actually have any color and that would eat him up and destroy itself too. Scary. Um, this is my second work of coronavirus. This is just my playfulness during the surge of corona pandemic, but I enjoy making it. While I was doing this, King was busily drawing numbers on the other side of the studio every day. It's just wonderful to paint together. And this is the end of my slideshow. And I would like to toss this back to Molly, if you would. So at this point, I will ask Nico and King a series of questions. And the chat box will remain open for you to ask Nico and King any questions that you may have. Um, if we do not get to them while we are live, uh, your questions will be answered on our Instagram page, um, presented to you on the slide before you. Um, so feel free to send in your questions. And we will now begin uh, questions for you, Karen Okay. So. So, okay. <laughs> um, if you could go ahead and answer the screen. Okay. So, how do you integrate Japanese ideology into your work. Okay, so I'm sorry, I have to read it so that I can answer it very, very well. Uh, my ideology was developed in my inner feelings while growing up in Japan. That is to be mindful of acceptance of living things and the order of nature. There is beauty in fulfilling the life we have been given 
to the best of our, our ability within. I'm wishing to express that in my paintings. This concept is mine from the start of any artwork in either oil or Nihonga that I create. Well, the works that you've talked about today, they exemplify these Japanese ideologies that you so seamlessly integrate into each of your works. Um, each of your works show the extreme detail that you give to each of the subjects and the forms that you paint. Um, in your biography, you state your kind of journey from Japan. And my question to you, though, is how did you end up in Raleigh? Oh, uh, this was actually marriage. Um, I met a gentleman who is who was working American Embassy in Tokyo, and I met him there. He was from Raleigh. Okay. Yes, or North Carolina. Well, we're very happy that you're here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, could you explain your choice in practicing the Nihanga technique as well as your journey to the medium? Okay. Um, so uh, the process of Japanese style painting begin with making colors from pigments and deer glue binding yourself. Each step and importance of process is deliberate and orderly. In today's world of painting materials and tools are becoming more convenient, quick and more comfortable to use. Against all, I chose to use the Nihonga technique. It is very tedious, but it's express your passion. It almost causes you to lose track of image you wanted to obtain if you are used to using the material from the convenient uh, era. However, I found this process is somewhat meaningful to me. Additionally, I will not forget to tell the effect of beauty in those pigments. The use of organic earthy materials bring me joy for those activities. Naturally, the theme of my painting shifted to more timeless images. So what is the most precious pigment that you use? Uh, the patina pigments that I actually brought the sample of. This one is a uh, cracked uh, patina. And this has, this is the same stone, but the variety of the colors are actually from dark to very light. This is what I was talking about if you crash into different um, uh, coarseness, these pigments has a different uh, color effects in the end. So looking at the video of you mixing the pigments with the binder mm -hmm. and then applying them onto the panel and thinking about the size of Pearl Mountain, mm -hmm. the three separate panels, how long did that take you to create that work? I think from the planning to the end of that work, I think I took two months to do it. Uh, but uh, applying the paint, uh, background paint happened with Suhi material, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I said, inexpensive, but very velvet, velvet uh, texture. This is the, the Suhi paints. And uh, so you can, I don't know if you can see, but this is a little bit more. You need to, no, I don't know <laughs> if you can see it. But anyway, this one is uh, more uh, inexpensive. So I apply all that into the background. Mm -hmm. And then where I want to enhance, I apply this, uh, these stone-like materials. <laughs> So, so therefore, um, to finalize the, the image, it took uh, a while to do that. So it's somewhat of a process in mm -hmm. which you kind of start with the background mm -hmm. and then you build layer and layer with the detail, essentially? Yes. Okay. And yes. then essentially your last layer would then be the silver leaf that you apply. Yes, the silver leaf was applied uh, before I put the sandy materials. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
beautiful piece to see in person. Thank you. Um, okay. Would you like to answer some questions? Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me about the numbers and the colors that you choose in your artwork? I use color in number to show my feelings in the paintings. Each color has a different feel of mine. Also, each color has a good color, which counts to me feelings. My mother told me this is a symptom of synesthesia for example some people who play music sees color in their sound the same way i have the feelings in color i can put my feelings in uh, over the paintings my feelings are dancing out of the canvas my artwork is a special word and it is better than using language to tell my feeling. With the work that you see? Uh, uh, do you have a paper towel? <laughs> it's, it's okay, we can wipe it later. Is that okay? Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's when we think about King's colors and numbers, we can refer back to the slideshow and think about the bird with the pretty leaves. And each color and number that King chooses, it kind of intersects and intertwines together, creating this kind of tension, but also this pattern that almost looks like a fabric or a tapestry. It's really captivating the way that King translates the colors and the numbers um, onto canvas. King, can you tell me how you choose what animals to paint? Um, my choice of animal changes depend on the day my mother asked me about it, but I didn't know about the answer for sure why the animal I paint is my feeling. I put it because it feels good. My animal is very sweet. I think the animal is my feeling because they are representing of me. Thank you, Steve. Mm, um, is she your favorite animal? Mm, cow. Cow? Ah, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Good job, thank you. <laughs> um, how does the wooden sculptures that we saw, we saw one example in the slideshow, the ice cream. How do the wooden sculptures relate to his larger body of work in the painting? Um, I believe that one day he was um, watching some video about ice cream and then he started painting the ice cream. So it was out of the blue. Uh, many times he uses um, animal as his representation, but uh, sometimes he does some uh, daily happiness, such as ice cream. I remember he did uh, mac and cheese and birthday cake, things like that appears on his canvas. Yeah, there's one canvas in the exhibition that is a tree. So, yeah. um, we are also in the exhibition are two other sculptures. So in total, the exhibition features three sculptures, um, the other being um, a fish and then the seahorse. Um, how do the wooden sculptures then kind of go along with the paintings? In a sense, do the sculptures 
bring out what we already see or could you talk about that a little bit? Okay. Uh, King was surprised and I was excited when I received a sculpture from Mr. Jeffrey Dale, who is a collector of King's artwork. Uh, King's artwork. Um, King painted them into a, other dimensions in many ways. Um, all of the work he cut out for King was in a book Miss Susan Woodson published. And um, I would like also to compare the expression that brought King's artwork to another level of the enjoyment. And um, this is coming from the discussion just as talk about that Jeffrey thought King, King's artwork has so much more dimension, so much more depth, so much more layers. And he wanted to see how he is, how King is going to take it if it was a sculpture. And uh, so I would like to introduce Jeffrey's statement um, of the sculpture. sculpture. The, sculpture the sculptures enhance and reinforce the overall feel and graphical nature of King's art. Keeping the sculptures mostly flat celebrates the bold flat area of color within the artwork, artist's work. By identifying and dividing these shapes into planes and separating them onto varying levels in a 2D becomes three-dimensional. This added dimension of strength in the art while stating true to the artist's original vision. So I understand where he's coming from, that he was just gazing and gazing and thought that, that this painting should not uh, be uh, sticking into just to the world. Mm -hmm. That visually brought to life. Yes, I think so. Yes. I think that's wonderful. I think so. Mm -hmm. They bring a sort of happiness, just like King's paintings in general, when you're able to see these three dimensional sculptures, it just provides, again, this own, this unique perspective of King's work that we are blessed to see through each artwork that he produces. Completely. Um, can you talk a little bit about the relationship between the two of you? How does your relationship, for example, influence one another mm. in the process of creating? He completely um, changing the perspective of the artworks that I thought that at what I do. Um, and that was to see his progress. Um, I used to think of King as a son in distress, but I fascinatingly found that his paintings are colorful and full of life. And I admire his warm, welcoming attitude for each day he paints. It would be right to say that my aspiration for painting gave King the idea of becoming a painter but I have never imagined that it would open up such a door to the world of King. I feel like his painting and his joyful art are spreading like ripple. And I am so fortunate to receive the benefit of the power of watching a true artist at work. It is entirely true that to aspire, aspire for art experiences to enrich the lives of ours and others. Um, I was uh, working as an artist to paint entirely for me first, but then really didn't think about how this imagery travels and ripple effect to people's lives. But that is the experience that King gave me. So I gave him the tool of paints and he gave me the meaningful painting. I think it would be nice to talk about also the exhibition in general. So in the beginning of your slideshow, you mentioned that um, you kind of hinted that you could see each other's influences in each other's artworks, and that is very true. And I think that kind of is the heart of the exhibition together, and really kind of is reflected in the title itself, because together we're having this good day. You and King paint together now. 
Yeah. You are such a duo, such a team. And that is reflected in both of your works, it seems. Both of you have similar techniques um, and props uh, are very similar as well. And it almost felt natural to create this title um, together, but then we are having a good day also kind of encapsulates King's works because each or the majority of King's works includes having a good day. Um, is this the first exhibition that you and King has featured in together or have there been others? Uh, I had one at the Pleiades Gallery in Durham mm -hmm. uh, that they had the featured show in the corner of the gallery uh, besides of the member artist. So uh, this is not the first time, but this is extensively the largest I ever prepare and thought about. And thank you very much for helping me on that one. We are honored to have you here. Thank you. It's truly an incredible exhibition that brings joy not only to the space because of the colors and the happiness, but because you and King are just incredible people. Thank you. Um, in what ways have COVID-19 brought you and King together? Has it changed your art? Are you producing more art? Has any themes or subjects changed? Um, when the COVID hit uh, strike, um, I have so much uh, personal life structure changed. So I was panicked and I have to put myself together. But while all that happens, King lost his studio ability because he has his own studio in uh, close to State College. But um, he came back and I separated my art studio and made his place. And that gave him uh, more versatile um, elements, which is uh, tall walls. Mm -hmm. So he can do larger works. Or I can give him the more help for what type of material he needs next. So those things help him. And then he painted a lot. Um, me, uh, after six months, uh, my life started becomes a little bit more, more orderly. So I personally just started to paint. Before that, I was just completely sorting my my life together. Uh, but um, I am so grateful that uh, he's enjoying making and I can provide him that. And I'm watching him paint in the same studio is just amazing. And uh, it brings me the answer to one of these endless questions of mine that what is the real art is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we talked about this earlier, but I think it's remarkable that you and King are continuing to produce artwork in COVID times. It's it's hard to find joy sometimes in the things that you love during COVID and the fact that you and King are actively doing what you love and sharing it with the community is something very great and appreciated. Yeah, um, we are irre irreplaceably fortunate to have a community that cares about different tasks of supporting our lives through paintings. We have received much warm support through the community in many ways. The exhibition opportunities and contests have helped King and I to grow as a painters to start it with. And the solidarity of our studio friends and those art copes are belong, uh, copes that we belong to uh, our American experiences. When the pandemic struck, we were allowed to receive heartwarming opportunities for support and encouragement right away. It was just right away. That was amazing. Our part is to return to our community in making art and growing together within the art community. I believe that this uh, repeating circle is what brings us all together. Well, thank you for Nico and King for your gallery talk and for answering my questions. Mm -hmm. um, if you, the viewer, 
have any further questions, you're welcome to send us questions on Instagram or over Facebook, and we will happily answer them as we receive them. Um, our opening reception in Johnson Hall follows this gallery talk. Um, if you're able to come, you must register. Uh, there are still spots available. Um, COVID-19 guidelines will be in place, uh, and we hope to see you there. If not, we will hopefully see you later. Thank you for joining us.